Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a mini zone of Baka Baka Baka. Uh, we are a podcast that talks about animes that we've watched over the past two weeks. But every other week, we do a mini so just to cover random topics, usually related to anime, that pop into our head and just start some dialogue and some discussion. And that's what we're all about here, man. And mini <laughs> says we don't put in a ton of effort. But we're talking about isekai anime for this mini so, which are anime about a stranger in a strange world right like a kid in king arthur's court okay re, re zero re, it's not like re zero. <laughs> i was trying to figure out is there an animated version of that <laughs> to talk about it i need the help of my co-host now first off we have the kagome to my inuyasha jeremy how you doing man oh female protagonist huh <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. No, no. It's just rare <laughs> in Isekai. Um so yeah, I'm I'm doing good. Um more Zelda, not really much else to talk about. <laughs> have you touched any of the other Switch games or are you just power? So I, I have Octopath Traveler and Valkyria 4, but I haven't actually booted <laughs> them up yet. It's kind of I'm I'm one of those if I start something else i'll probably get distracted and then i'll forget where i'm at in zelda and forget all the muscle memory of the controls and yeah. get my butt kicked by a moblin i know it so I know it well. yeah. Yeah. all right we also have the main female protagonist from escaflone i i don't know i don't know hi forget, jason forgettable hey. girl <laughs> forget it <laughs> random npc <laughs> uh, uh doing all right um I am eagerly awaiting uh, the new expansion for Path of Exile because uh, they're basically going to just shove as much content into it as possible. Plus, they're adding um, Shadow of War type mechanics to the uh, bad guy system. That so cool. I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been uh, I've actually just been playing some modded Minecraft with my sons. Um, oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, nice. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's neat. The three of us are, you know, we're we're playing, building a base together, and um, one of them is blowing up half the base while the other one's like getting into weird. <laughs> you dumb cat. <laughs> Mini Excuse so, me, man. Mini so. <laughs> uh -huh. And my name is Troy, and I actually for the for Black Friday I bought the Detroit Becoming Human, and wow. me and my family played it together. I managed to beat it. I got two of three happy endings, which is pretty good when you're playing the David Cage game. <laughs> um, and I'll just say Hank is life. Hank is, is here. You need Hank in your life. <laughs> Everyone should have a Hank. It's funny. I don't know that much about Detroit becoming human. I, I hear good things mostly, um, but I do remember that CG sequence for Kara, the introduction. Oh my gosh. That was, that was, Mind bending when it came out. Uh, the 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 graphics and the way people look in it are, are just amazing. The only thing that kind of doesn't work is people's hair. So the shorter your hair, the better you look. Uh, what, mm. what Hank actually has long hair, and it's like eh, it doesn't quite fall right, does it? But <laughs> but it was great. I, I absolutely loved it. I love all the David Cage games. Back to Indigo Prophecy. Um, oh man, Indigo Prophecy blew my mind. Is that anyway. one of the games where you like have to cut your fingers off to save someone? No, that was heavy rate. <laughs> okay. Let me look while we're waiting for Jason, let me sell you Indigo Prophecy. Okay. okay. <laughs> I knew nothing about it. I turn it on. The game, you're in a bathroom cutting in your arm with a knife and you've just committed a murder. And it says there's a cop in the cafe of the restroom you're in, and you have to hide the murder. And you have to clean the blood and you have to clean yourself and bandage yourself and you have to get every hide the body, all that stuff. And then you leave. And then you switch to a cop character and you come in and you have to investigate the crime scene. And everything you forgot to do makes the cop happy. Everything you did well as the killer makes the cop sad. And you're playing both characters throughout the game. And it's so good. And then by the end of the game, 
you're doing the matrix <laughs> interesting interesting okay <laughs> and the end is so stupid the end is the, the, like plot wise it doesn't make any sense but like i said you, you're how we got from the beginning to the matrix i don't know but it works <laughs> So the topic we're talking about in this Minnesota is Isekai anime. Like I said, these are anime about a character gets whisked away to a land they are unfamiliar with. Um, it's been very popular in anime lately. We've watched a lot on the podcast. We have watched a, not a lot on the podcast. Uh, we didn't watch um, sort of a smartphone in another world. Uh, oh yeah, I right saw now it. the I reincarnated of the slime is out there, but we've seen a ton. We've seen Overlord, Tanya the Evil, um, Three Zero, one of our highest rated animes ever, is one of these. Mm-hmm. Sort of online though, and stuff that is all that stuff. I wanted to bring this up because every time we've talked about etchy anime, we've talked about comedy animes, um, we've talked about shonen animes, and I thought like, okay, it's time for us to pull this out and kind of explore what this genre is to us. Because uh, we've even done slice of life, haven't we? We 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 do this kind of stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. So, isekai anime. Well, how do you guys feel about this genre to start off with? So, because we have seen so many of them, and my first introduction to them was ReZero. Um, it, I kind of treat them as almost any other anime. Um, mainly, I treat them as shonen. Um, so my bar is pretty high. But it's got to have, you know, you just got to have your story beats. It's got to have your, um, uh, it, it's got to have world building. It's got to have character development. And especially that slow burn character development will nearly get me every time. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, something I'll enjoy watching, but it can't be shallow and i think this last anime we just reviewed uh is in that category unfortunately mm. um but yeah sure is a guy is a particular genre but i kind of view it as almost any other showman i absolutely love it um my first introduction to it was sword art online years and years ago and it was so intriguing to me this idea that this character is, is in the case of sword art online in a video game. That was really cool. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't pretend to be anything else. It is the video game in sword art online. In a lot of these others, it's very blurry. What it is. We don't know. Sometimes we have no way of telling, but um, I really liked that because it was, Hey, let's imagine for a moment, the video game was real. Would you still make all the choices you do when you're playing it? You know, uh, and and then watching other ones like Log Horizon and uh, Grimgar that just take that and run with it and say, let's make it even more real. Let's make it even more dangerous or let's see how clever these individuals can be in dealing with this scenario. How much of your of your gaming skills actually can benefit you if you're now living in this world. I mean, I always think of the the argument that your gaming skills aren't really worth anything, but then maybe they are if you're in the game world, you know? And so I, I really love this. But even if it's not in a game, even if it has something to do with like just any other world, when the protagonist is a foreign entity to the world, it's a lot easier for you to not be familiar with what this world is and have it introduced. It makes sense when there's a lot of conversations uh, um, uh, revolving around how things work because the character's learning too. Um, so I think it's it's just easier to kind of grab a hold of for that reason too. But yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan. I, I think it's very important that they pick one thing and go with that one thing and don't muddy it up too much by having too many different directions they want to go with a given isekai. But um, if they do that one thing right, I think I think it can be very successful. So when we first watched ReZero, even though I've I've seen a few Isekai in the past, I, I thought that was like, wow, this is just blowing my mind. This is so cool. This is so fresh. This is so new. At this point in the podcast, we've seen so many. It's not so fresh. And it's not so good. <laughs> so when I do see him come along, I'm like, oh, no, please don't just be a generic. Jeremy's going to pick this. Oh, Isekai. man. Um, <laughs> I need you to do do something special. I need you to twist it. It now has to be fresh. Um, a lot of a lot of the ones we've seen do do that, one hundred percent. 
and I've given good reviews to them, and that's because they presented it in a way that was unique. And if you do that, that's great. But now you're, we're at that point, you can't just have a generic one anymore. I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not into it at all. So, what besides to us, what what we like about it? What do you think is the mass appeal? That's making these so popular. And a lot of the, them now are coming off of light novels. A lot of them seem to be sourced from light novels and then mangas and now anime. But there seems to be like almost two, three per season. Um, what what do you think is, is driving it? What, what appeals to the audience so much? I, I think it probably has to do with familiarity and also an established pattern. Um, once a generation sees it... Um, <laughs> Once a generation sees it, and I just mean a generation as in like, it doesn't even have to be 20 years or whatever. It could just be five, 10 years. Somebody's read or seen um, Isekai anime and it's been successful and they did a good job at it. You're going to have people riffing on it. And if, if it was successful enough to get a very large audience, you might have a lot of riffing. Um, and people are going to want to make their own interesting takes on it, which... I think that's great. You're going to get some interesting, clever twists of the different tropes and ideas. Um, but, but it's also very easy to, to grasp. I mean, I, I'm kind of surprised. Maybe there were, I mean, I know that we've mentioned, like you mentioned, even in the intro, Escaflone, that, that that was Isekai as well. And that's a pretty old anime. So right. this isn't a, a particularly new genre, but I never really thought of it as an existing genre before watching Sword Art Online. And yeah, it could have just been due to my ignorance, but it certainly does seem like it boomed after that popularity. And maybe it was because Sword Art Online was so obvious what it was trying to do. Right. That it just kind of clicked in everybody's head. Hey, let's go this direction with that idea. Let's go this direction. I think there's also something about the the audience it's speaking to. I think that the like anime watchers probably are tend to be video game players. Mm -hmm. When these guys go to very video game feeling world, they're like, ah, yeah, I'd be down for that. I could handle that. I could, I could be this hero too. Whereas like you watch Dragon Ball Z is like, yeah, I mean, I can't do that many push ups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I can, I can grind a level 70 character and wow. And then go to that mm -hmm. world and be the best. Like, I know that's not the top of my uh, so, Jason, what do you think is the appeal of Isekai like anime to the general wide audiences? I think it's the idea of you know I, definitely what you're saying with like you know I, I I can relate more to my video game character than I can to One Punch, One Punch Man. Um, but I think also just the idea of supplanting yourself in such a foreign situation. Uh, and just kind of seeing how that plays out. Because it is so fantastical and different than normal media. I mean, what other show besides, say, Tom Cruise's uh, uh, Live, Die, Return? Mm, yeah, that, oh, yeah. have, that have, we seen, have we seen where such an interesting concept of <clears throat> when you die, and, and so far as you can tell, you're the only one this happens to, when you die, you go back to a, a particular point in the past and you remember everything. So then, uh, and also the psychological effects of what happens to you when you see a bad outcome every single time over and over again, uh, where you've seen loved ones die over and over again and you're just trying to do your best to not have that happen. Um, I thought ReZero was uh, a great example. Well, I, that's exactly what I'm describing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, of just that, and I think you've mentioned this too, Troy, where like anime is just able to do things that normal media can't or is bad at doing. And, um, I think this is a high point for them because Shonen like Bleach and Dragon Ball Z and uh, <clears throat> Tokyo Ghoul, um, <laughs> they, <laughs> yep. uh, you know, it, it's a very similar formula, and yeah, there's some aspects of it that are done really well in anime, but it's kind of like the bar, right? Um, I think some Izakai exceed that bar just mm -hmm. because of the world that they're telling and the storytelling that they're able to do. I think some succeed, and they have, some don't. Okay, so what what common flaws do you think are in Izakai that that they need to be wary of? 
I I think the again I think the overpowered character is becoming too much of a trope, hmm. uh, where where it's like, hey, here's a guy who can't be beaten. Yeah, okay, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> so the last three anime characters we watched, um, I, I think they need to be careful with that one. It does seem they're going to that well a lot. I think Overlord does a great job of handling it because of their world building is be- is more important than even the main character's opinus. He, he's almost they make him a force of nature and and then show the effects in that world. But like how not to summon a demon lord it was like, uh, he can't be beat. Oh look, here's another guy he can't beat. <laughs> right. I think probably in my book the biggest thing they have to be wary of is following any existing formula too closely. Mm. Um and and because, like you were saying before, there are so many that have come out recently that that's just going to get harder. Um, I mean, there's one that I've heard about recently where the the character, the protagonist is a shield bearer. And that's apparently not a very great role. It's not very much prestige, but he's clever. And so he finds a way to make it useful and in the end becomes overpowered because of it. In others, you know, it's some other skill that doesn't seem like it would be useful but somehow that gets flipped on its head and the character is actually overpowered because of a clever way to use it um so in the end they do kind of wind up turning it into an overpower anime sometimes um podcast voice although i also think that i i've seen enough of of them where they they are struggling um like in grimgar Minor spoilers, just fast forward like five seconds or so, minor spoilers with Grimgar, you don't get that chance. If you die, you're dead. There is no resurrection. (laughs) And and that's that's fairly different than some of the other ones that I've seen. And so I like that. But now that that's been done, another thing in Grimgar is the way that the enemies are treated, it hurts to kill them. It's, It's done so well. Like, you feel bad when they're killing monsters. Not just people, monsters, just NPCs that they would normally take out. And so now that that's been done, it's going to be more difficult for you to do it in a clever way that is strikingly difficult. Um, strikingly, diff- strikingly different. Um, it kind of reminds me of how recreators took the idea of going into another world and said, hey, let's flip that on its head and have characters come from another world, multiple of them, into ours. That's right. And and that's a really cool... Um, in some some top 10 lists and stuff, it's actually included as an isekai anime because it deals with other worlds, right. even though the protagonist doesn't necessarily go to any of them. Um, so I think that's probably the most difficult thing I can see is keeping it fresh because it's so popular and it's so well done. There's been a lot of really good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the dangers you can run into are the way you write it. Um, because if Konosuba was serious at all, it, it would fall on its face immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think you have to be very careful because world building with these kinds of stories can start off easy because you're talking about fantastical land where you get to create literally anything you want, where, you know, demons and dog people and cat people live together <laughs> or where elves are the bad guys or uh, where the monsters are, you know, uh, am- ambiguous, almost good guys, right? Um, it, as you're writing your story, it's easy to trip up. And I think uh, Overlord suffers from that in season two, uh, yeah. but they recover really, really well. And I, I don't know if it's really recovering or if it's just... Um, just the way the story was told, but you like you you get this great arc of lizard people, and then they're just gone. And it, uh, so, I think um, from 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 what I've seen with the different other world animes is because you're creating your own, um, you you need to be not only say consistent, but then like the the main character needs to pull his weight when it comes to bringing the audience with him, but staying his own character at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, so something that I thought of last week when we were talking about that anime, 
how how do these end? I thought this hit me when I was watching Overlord season three. Um, I'm like, man, how does this end? Because mm. like he's looking for his guildmates, but they played heroic characters. What are they going to think when they see what he's done with their guild? Uh, how happy are they going to be to be found if he finds them? Um, but also ReZero, how does that? End? And I know the 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 light novels are obviously way light years ahead and probably have much more hints, but we've seen so many of these setups, right? I'm a character. I'm in this fantasy world and it's almost hopeless for me to get home. Do they never go home? Is it almost always a tragic ending? Uh, sort of online did resolve their storyline. Decided to whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But, but for a lot of these, especially these ones about teenage gamer boy go falls into video game world. What's the end game? And that's never made sense to me. Um, so, so there's two different types of isekais, right? There's the video game MMO, you fall into a game world. But then there's also the other side, which is it's another world, but I didn't get there through any sort of means. I was just summoned, right? Um, which makes me think, how not to summon a demon lord? It's a game-like world and not the game itself. And the reason I think that is because so, like, for instance, with Overlord, they mentioned that it's a VR experience, right? So I could see how the equipment sucked him in, or maybe he's just in a mental state that he's being manipulated. He can't move his hands to bring up and take off the headset, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can buy that. Uh, ReZero is not a video game world. He, he assumed it was when he first got there, but an entity within this realm summoned him there, mm -hmm. similar to Konosuba. Um, he was sent to another world after right. his death. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's the reason I bring that up is it's very important to how the series ends, right? Because if you've got a guy that fell into a video game world, but there was never any connection, right? He's just looking at a monitor and all of a sudden he's sucked in. Well, how does he get out? Like that doesn't, that doesn't, I, I don't see him ever leaving in that, in that respect. Like ReZero, I could see, you know, they reverse the magic, they send him back to his world, right? Or with uh, Overlord, uh, you know, he finally gets his senses and he's able to come out of the VR experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I could see a lot of stories where they're just, it's a trapped pro tra protagonist and that's his life now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is it, it to me, it sounds like something where it needs to be defined in the anime itself, specifically, individually. In what? the very first episode. Well, it can hint at it in the first episode and then expand on it later. Yeah. Um, but but it needs to be something that's independently, you know, each anime has their own way to resolve the situation. Maybe in some of them, there is a, no desire, no drive, no reason to ever get out of the game. And that's not your end goal. And, you know, if the protagonist isn't interested in leaving, there can still be a really interesting story there. Sometimes the protagonist might be interested in leaving. Like, I'm thinking of ReZero here. But it's not in his power. Nothing's in his power. Like the whole storyline is him trying to figure out what someone else wants him to do in order to stay alive. And so the resolution of that story is, is going to be a very different one than, say, the resolution of Sword Art Online, which is we're on a time limit here. There's a possibility of getting out. Mm. Um, so I do think it's, it's, it's unique to each one, but, um, yeah yeah it's hard to say i it depends entirely on the situation the protagonist yeah because i mean look at tanya devil he's never coming back oh god no <laughs> god <laughs> god no <laughs> right <laughs> or entity x, entity x no. <laughs> okay um and now favorite it's the kind you can list a couple and then you're you're the one you hate the most <laughs> Uh, for me, ReZero is always going to be at the top of, well, I don't know about always, but if currently is at the top of the list, definitely go Tanya to Evil next. Um, uh, and Konosuba, uh, it, it's always just going <laughs> to live in my, like, that set such a bar. I missed, I was watching Sound of Summon Demon Lord, I was missing Konosuba every single episode. I was yeah. just watching stuff happen, I'm like, oh, where's Darkness when I need her? Like, <laughs> I need Aqua to be a jerk. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And ones I didn't like. Uh, how about the Summon Demon? I didn't. I did not like it. Um, yeah, it, there were some aspects that I did, um, but it had that 
world building issue and add the character issue where that character building was just not there. Um, and I think Jeremy mentioned it last week, but it was just trying to do too many things at one time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All right, Jeremy, how about you? Uh, definitely ReZero. I mean, <laughs> how can you say anything else, right? Um, Log Horizon, very good. Grimgar, very intriguing. Um, honestly, I haven't watched very many that I didn't like. Uh, the Devil is a Part Timer is considered an Isekai, and it's, I uh, watched, yeah, it's on the list. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I, I've watched like two thirds of the first season, and it just didn't grab me. It was okay. Really? Yeah, but it I just love wasn't that. that just yeah, wasn't that funny for me. Me and Jason are both big fans of that one. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but definitely how not to summon a demon lord is, is very low. Very yeah, I was low. kind of worried that it would be hard. <laughs> so, but, yeah. Well, I, we need to watch some more bad isekai. Is what we need to do. Uh, I, I do have it every minute. So my, my favorites are pretty much the same. Um, ReZero, Konosuba. Mm-hmm. Uh, but actually I'm into Overlord now. And, and one of the reasons is I want to know how that ends. I, I, I'm, I still hate the main character, but I'm I'm into that world so much. That world it matters to me now, and I can't. I want to see how that comes to a conclusion. Um, so I'm into that. Uh, I do want to do a, give a quick shout out to Inuyasha too. That I I that was back when I was much younger, um, and that's back when Isekai were for ladies who wanted romantic action stories. <laughs> now, now they're about boys who play video games. Uh, and my worst is actually all of Sword Art Online after the first story arc. I almost picked that too. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, the 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 whole adventuring with his elf sister is just so rough for me. Um, I didn't mind. Is it the just bad storytelling, or yeah, especially compared to the first one. And, and it made mm-hmm. it, it took a character who was awesome, his equal, you know, and, and they fell in love with, and then it put her in a cage. And then the whole story is like we had to save her from being raped by tentacle monsters with my yeah. sister who is in love with me. Uh oh wow that got weird quick yeah <laughs> yeah uh, just the fact that Sword Art Online introduces a new love interest girl for him every s- story arc even though he is, has a girl he fell in love with and they even mm-hmm. got married in game and and like consider themselves together but they still give him a new harem character to add to the Jeez. harem it's 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 like I I don't understand what you're doing well I they really, I like they the shifted first- genres yeah they they definitely shifted genres. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. I think we're going to wrap it up there for our Isakai anime mini show. Thank you guys so much for your thoughts. Uh, I'm sure there will be plenty more to watch in the future. Uh, I know that Slime One is doing good right I now. I see that. Yeah. That one actually looked interesting when I heard, read about yeah. the concept. He, uh, The fact that he's OP. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought he was going to be underpowered, but now that's overpowered too? Oh. Okay, so uh, we are currently watching Cells at Work. We will be discussing that next week. Uh, and you can leave any comments about this minisode or any anime we watch on our Twitter at Baka Podcast, our email, the anime Baka Club at gmail.com, or leave us a comment wherever you found this podcast and it'll get back to us and we will reply. Thank you so much for listening. And I think we have to say good night. Goodbye. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great week. Sayonara.